Hello everyone, okay, welcome back to another video. Okay, we're back with part 3, okay, of your human geography sustainable development. Okay, today we're going to be talking about alternative energy sources. Okay, what are some reasons for alternative energy sources? Okay, these are basically some simple reasons for you to just understand. Okay, for you to just absorb. Okay, you don't really have to use these in the exam. Okay, but just take note, okay, that one of the, some of the reasons, okay, the five main reasons, okay, for alternative energy sources, okay, is because they're actually a low carbon form of energy production. Okay, alternative energy sources is anything that is not fossil fuels, okay. What else? Okay, they are basically extremely reliable and consistent, okay, in actually producing your energy. They also have high potential. Okay, they are more economically viable, means that they could be cheaper in some instances, as well as to promote economic development. Okay, so let's take note of these five reasons. Okay, we'll see how these reasons apply to your different energy, uh, different alternative energy sources later on. Okay, so what are the different energy um, um, methods of production? Okay, one energy source, okay, firstly that you need to know, is your biomass energy. So biomass basically refers to biofuels, okay, such as corn, Locks, bamboo, sugarcane, basically anything that belongs to your bio, your your kind of like your um, nature, more of nature wise. Okay, um, so biomass energy just take note. Okay, has got the potential to be large scale, but it needs efficient management. Okay, as it involves a lot of resources. Okay, by using up a lot of corn, you notice that there's a trade off because why? There's actually a trade off in food. Okay, if corn is actually used for energy instead, so this may actually affect environmental sustainability. Okay, the next one would be solar energy. Okay, solar energy has a lot of potential as well. Okay, it's got potential to be large scale. Okay, but currently only um, on a very small scale because of technological limitations. Why? Solar energy is actually very, very expensive. Okay, um, so in a lot of countries like LDCs, they actually cannot afford solar energy. Okay, one more reason, okay, is that it's actually subject to daily and seasonal variations and it's weather dependent. So if I'm in a tropical... Um, monsoon climate whereby where, where it is always raining okay chances are is that it's actually very hard for me to harness solar energy because um there's always a lot of cloud cover right when there's a lot of cloud cover there's little room for sunlight to actually produce this solar energy okay the next one would be wind energy okay wind energy just take note is actually location specific likewise okay i need a lot of wind in order to generate my wind turbines in order for uh, wind energy to be generated okay and it requires constant wind power in large space Okay, because why? Wind turbines are huge. Okay, they require huge land areas. So countries like Singapore, impossible to have. Okay, next is hydropower. Hydropower refers to anything, energy that basically uses water to um, harness itself. Okay, so the, the issue about hydropower is that it's actually location specific. Okay, it is also actually very expensive. Okay, because you have to build a whole dam. Okay, you need a huge water body. You may have to, you know, relocate people who are living in the area. All these kind of um, factors which contribute Okay, to why hydropower may not be the most viable solution. Okay, and also it depends on timing. Okay, your tidal power. Okay, lastly, you have got geothermal energy. Okay, this one is basically location specific. Why? Countries like Singapore, which does not experience earthquakes. Okay, you have, you are, you're not exactly lying on the cracks of a techno, uh, tectonic plate. Okay, what actually happens is that you cannot generate such geothermal energy. Okay, because this energy is only generated when there are earthquakes, for instance. Okay. This whole topic, what I actually want to talk about, which is why I went through the previous parts um, much quicker, is actually your energy mix. Okay, a lot of students tend to um, be very unsure on what exactly this concept of energy mix is. Okay. Okay, firstly, the definition of energy mix is actually the balance, okay, between the various sources of energy at the national scale. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, it basically means your mix of fossil fuels as well as renewable energy. In this case, your alternative energy sources. Okay. When you're looking at energy mix, you're looking at, okay, how much of a percentage am I using for fossil fuels? And how much am I using um, um, in, in, in energy production for renewable energy? Okay, so basically, in this case, energy mix refers to your energy production as well as your energy consumption. Okay, but you're looking at how much of each is pertaining to this mix of fossil fuels, how much is pertaining to the mix in renewable energy. Okay, so... Just a simple example for you if you want to quote, okay. In 2009, okay, um, China actually accounted for 46.9% of global coal consumption, okay, that generated 70.6% of its commercial energy. What does this mean? Okay, it basically means that in 2009, okay, China actually managed to generate 70.6% of its energy by using almost 50% of the entire world's coal um, availability. 
Okay, which you notice is a lot, right? It's actually a lot because a lot of other countries will not be able to use this um, fuel in producing energy. Okay, so then what is energy consumption? Okay, energy consumption is basically um, how much is a, or, or in the sense, how much energy is a country consuming? Okay, so you notice that actually recently, okay, LDCs and NIEs are actually starting to consume more energy. Okay, the reason why is due to population growth and they, they have an increasing affluence as well. Okay, while your DCs are actually trying to reduce energy consumption, particularly in the case of fossil fuels, which is why you, you know there's a lot of a lot of um, campaigns nowadays say, oh, cut down on fossil fuels. Okay, the reason behind this case is because DCs actually want to switch to alternative energy sources like solar energy, okay, like harnessing hydropower. Okay, so take note of um, energy consumption. Next, you have got energy production. Okay, take note of energy production. Basically, it has got two elements to it. One of it is the global distribution of reserves. The other one is the distrib distribution of energy production and consumption. Okay, what exactly do these mean? Okay, basically what it means is the geography of energy production stems, okay, from how much of your global, um, how much of your reserves are being globally distributed in terms of energy. Okay, for example, how much energy does, us, how much fossil fuels does um, China get as compared to Singapore? Okay, as well as your distribution of such energy production and consumption. So by producing a lot of, let's say, uh, tidal energy okay, from hydropower, am I actually distributing it out? Okay, is there a lot of production or is there higher consumption? Okay, so when you look at the geography of energy production, don't get it confused with energy production itself. Okay, energy production itself is basically me producing energy. But the geography okay, stems from these two, these two elements um, in, in this case. Okay? Okay, so let's take note that basically energy production is on the rise okay, due to economic and political factors. Okay, what does this mean? Very simple. With an increasing affluence, okay, naturally there is greater consumption of energy. Why? With, with greater income, right, what actually happens? Okay, I can afford aircon, uh, air conditioners, right? I can afford washing machines. So when I can afford all these, it actually has it actually results in greater energy production. Okay, which actually boils the other side of the debate, which is that you notice nowadays there's more energy saving devices. Okay, so this is where your debate, okay, your argument can actually stem from in terms of energy production. Okay, is it actually sustainable in the long run? Okay, now I move on to your exam requirements. Okay, the first exam requirement tends to focus on 12 mark essays. Okay, for this topic, usually 12 mark essays will come out, 20 marks are very hard to come out. Okay, just take note whenever you write a 12 mark essay, include one. I can't even write two. Okay, one and then two and then three. Okay, namely in such essays, you want to include nuclear energy, solar energy, and hydropower. Okay, this why for me, I feel these are the three easiest. La, but it's completely up to you. But just make sure that in 12 mark essays, you just need to have three of these um, alternative energy sources and then just explain it, give example. For example, nuclear energy, you've got the Ch uh, uh, Chernobyl incident, right? Um, in Russia. Nuclear is also harnessed by US, right? Solar energy harnessed by Singapore. You have noticed a lot of HDBs have solar panels on top of them. Hydropower, China has a lot. The three gorgeous them. Okay, these are examples that you can throw in. Okay, next one is you also need to bring the concept of energy mix. Okay, energy mix in terms of the balance, okay, which is your energy consumption versus your energy production. Okay, as a form of evaluation. Okay, so just need to talk about any trade-offs or conflicts created by high energy consumption, energy production. Okay, energy mix in terms of how do countries also diversify. So are they going to cut down on fossil fuels to increase alternative energy sources in hydropower? Okay, or are they trying to, you know, um, um, I mean, are they even trying to actually find this balance? Okay, are they trying to actually incorporate an energy mix at all? So this is where you will evaluate, okay, some of you may be wondering, how do I actually apply all this? Okay, for example, if let's say you're talking about nuclear energy, you can you can explain in your evaluation that in the long run, with nuclear energy becoming, let's say, a greater um, possible sustainable source of energy, more countries are increasingly moving away from fossil fuels to diversify their energy mix in the form of alternative energy sources such as nuclear. Okay, hence this would bring about greater sustainability for countries and for the world, something like that. So that's a, a very good evaluation already. Okay, so if not, that's all for this part on alternative energy sources part three. Okay, the next part we will cover more um, possibly on the specific alternative energy sources. Okay, if not, 
be sure to subscribe okay so that you at least get um you uh, are not, uh, not like at least you're aware okay that um of the latest videos that are coming up okay and then possibly other economics or other math or other geography um lectures or even um question analysis which are coming up okay if not if there if there's any questions feel free to leave it down in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye